Is Madalith in the house? Are we waiting? Seventh graders no. come later? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're very good. <laughs> All right. Does this thing work? Yes, more or less. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. So lovely to see you all. Welcome, parents and grandparents, friends, faculty, admin, eighth graders. I see seventh graders back there. Thank you everyone for being here today. It's an honor to be able to share this time and space with you on this beautiful day in June on our Grace Farm campus. Um, this campus that's been your playground and your classroom for these many, many years. This playground and classroom that sits on unceded Abenaki land that we have the honor to share. I invite us all to take a moment to look out beyond the tent I can't turn around and join you because then you won't hear me, but I'll look with my backwards eyes. And take in the beauty, feel the native history it holds, and commit to a future where we live and learn in a way that not only honors its heritage, but embodies and supports the Abenaki's mission to respect and steward the land so that its uniqueness and beauty is here and protected for generations to come. This is an honor for us to be able to do that work. And it's a great responsibility to live into that work. And thank you for joining us, not only on Grace Farm, but everywhere that you go beyond here. So this day is a celebration for you, eighth graders, but we would be remiss to skip a moment to acknowledge and appreciate all the work your parents have done. So I'll do that. And then we'll get back to you soon. Um, Parents, when you first arrived at Orchard Valley, I'm sure you were taken 
by the beautiful land, the warming and welcoming classrooms, the love emanating from the teachers. And while you may or may not have had a strong understanding of what Waldorf education is, you knew this was the place that you wanted your children to grow and, grow and blossom. Either intellectually or intuitively, you knew that Orchard Valley would bring your children to a place where they would be loved by their peers and teachers. They'd be guided to become the individuals who are able to see the beauty around them. They would learn to share their individual voices, be inspired to advocate for the earth and fight for injustices. And grow to have the capacity to not only respect and appreciate each other's differences, but to genuinely love them despite those differences. These are all unique attributes that our world needs. And after spending a few weeks with these seventh and eighth graders on the land, weeding gardens and moving mulch, I can tell you that these students have those attributes. So to sum it up before we get on to the real, the real stuff, I wanna say thank you. After an unusual COVID year, all that is left is to say thank you. <laughs> thank you to the teachers. Thank you to the parents. Thank you to the students for being here in this bizarre year, navigating outdoor learning, masks, health checks, and a ridiculous amount of hand sanitizer. <laughs> we made it through a pandemic, and it took all of us to navigate this uncertain time. But we did it. We're sitting here, and we're all still breathing. Thank you to the teachers who know how to educate these children in love, teach them to think and feel, and model what it means to be an upright human committed to bringing love and radiance into the world. Even during a pandemic, with the added stressors of each day, you nailed it. And thank you, parents. Thank you for the courage to send your children to school during a pandemic. Thank you for the hundreds of miles you drove over these years to get your children here. Thank you for the hundreds of lunches you made. Thank you for chaperoning ski trips, bike trips, and camping trips, and the countless hours that you spent making sure that this school could run. Thank you. I'm grateful for all of you in more ways than words can express. And lastly, since this is a Waldorf school, thank you for committing to that work, to that revolutionary education as a way of bettering the world. I'm so excited to see what these students do to bring that outwards. And now, to the good stuff. It is my pleasure to introduce my colleague and fellow middle school teacher, Jane Hill. While Jane and I had the opportunity to work together for many years now, this year was particularly special in that my fifth grade class, fifth and sixth grade class, and Jane's seventh and eighth grade formed a pod during this unusual time of COVID-19 safety protocols. In effect, Jane was my main social contact this past year. <laughs> And her humor and spontaneous gifts of pastries buoyed me through our days. <laughs> and I can say from firsthand experience that Jane has excellent taste when it comes to many things, from pastries to cappuccino. And if there is someone getting you yummy treats, pray that person is Jane. <laughs> this school year was full of unknowns. We all had to find ways to be nimble and creative with the means that we had. And we had to face the unknown with incredible courage. We had to take one faithful step after another, being present to what the moment was asking for. And Jane did so with grace, wit, and vision. But this is not altogether too unsurprising given her pioneering spirit. You see, 15 years ago, Jane was also standing on the edge of an unknown, but a different kind of unknown. And at that time, the unknown was how to do a middle school program at Orchard Valley. She approached the blank slate of Canvas <laughs> with possibilities and created traditions that have become rites of passage for our middle schoolers. So to this day, 
Um, they spend weeks performing squiring duties as sixth graders in preparation for the medieval games and knighting ceremony. As eighth graders, they become buddies with their first grade buddies, carving pumpkins and climbing Spruce Mountain. And even today's graduation ceremony has roots with Jane's first run through the middle school. So just sit and ponder that for a moment. In many ways, Jane has contributed elements of the identity of Orchard Valley's middle school. And throughout its crafting, she held the unfolding development of the middle schooler at its center. Jane has served the school in multiple ways beyond teaching middle school as a class teacher. She was also the school's movement teacher and started Orchard Valley's downhill ski partnership with Bolton Valley. She authored and directed a circus. Sometimes as Waldorf teachers, we feel like we're in a circus every day, <laughs> learning verses and new stories and things every single day. But really, she conducted a real circus. Um, in the same year, she taught movement and third grade main lesson. And if that wasn't enough, she was also on numerous committees at the school, from care committee to governance council. And she contributed critical thinking and big picture perspectives in our faculty circle. And here we are, yet again, at the edge of another unknown. <laughs> um, with our seventh and eighth graders moving on, Jane will also be boldly stepping into a new adventure, helping adults with special needs. And we wish her the same courage and inspiration as she closes this chapter at Orchard Valley and as she steps into a new adventure with a new organization. And given all that she's created here, there's no doubt that she will meet this next opportunity with openness and care and vision and reverence. Now, before we invite Jane to the podium to speak, I would like to invite Sherry Rockcastle on behalf of the parents of the seventh and eighth grade class, as well as any and all parents of seventh and eighth graders, as Sherry presents something special. So it was really exciting to think about how we could honor Ms. Hill. Um, probably because one reason is her priorities align with our, the parent body, I'd say, for, for one reason. When we thought about <clears throat> what she might like, the first thing we knew is we wanted it to be something that would not end up in a closet or collect dust. And when we thought about who Miss Hill is, we thought, this is an amazing woman who strikes out for experience and memories and not for material things, unless the material thing is to create an experience. So um, as we pondered what the experience that would be for Miss Hill, we recognized that we probably don't have that best answer is something that could meet her heart's desire, something that would feel special and truly create memories. So we did a little bit of an investigation and that really brought us right to Jane, who um, we thought, I felt, we felt that was, she was bold and, and thoughtful to be able to give to us what she thought really might meet her heart's desire. But at first she was pretty shy about this. And uh, with a little bit of collaboration and convincing, it, the, the gift got expanded to really what, what would fill and fit who we, who we want to honor today, which is the teacher of our kids. And, and we're just so appreciative of everything that you did for this, for this year, for last year, how you see our children, how they know they're seen. It's just really been beautiful. And, you know, this... Um, I'm going to unwrap this for you because we would like everybody to understand what we're giving you. So this is not what we're giving her, but this is where she is going to be going. Um, with thanks also to Mary Fedick and uh, Wynn Collaborating, Jane had announced that there was this place that she had always wanted to go. And it was here. So this is just a blown up picture, just for the, just for a decoy. What she really gets is 
you know, the smaller print with the coupon on back, redeemable for one week, which she has picked out. So we're glad you're going to be heading there in September. We're Thank so glad. You. Yeah. Place. That's why Sherry didn't say where. <laughs> it is now my pleasure to invite Jane Hill to the podium for her last grade eight graduation speech. Perhaps my last. You yes. never know. <laughs> never know what might happen. So, just take a moment, because that was uh, a lot of love in my direction, and just receiving that. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Lindsay and Sherry. Um, this afternoon's event is to honor our graduates, but I can't help but take this opportunity to also express appreciation to the faculty and staff of Orchard Valley. And thank you, Joanne Garten, for your beautiful violin music um, as we processed on. A big thanks to Meg Sherbatskoy, who has been the point person behind this whole event. Um, thank you, Kate Camaletti, for getting the art uh, retrospective together, which you will enjoy after this ceremony. Um, wow, what a year. <laughs> uh, there. There are challenges every year for a small independent school in rural Vermont in particular, but this year was really challenging for the board, for the administration, for us teachers. Um, but here we are and we did it, as Madalief said also. We helped raise these kids and we offered them a full day at school with experiential learning. So I am so proud to stand here today as a colleague at Orchard Valley. So I would like to uh, welcome family, friends, faculty, staff, and in particular, the parents of our graduates today. And don't worry, you will be seeing the seventh grade, if you're wondering. We haven't <laughs> forgotten them. They're coming on soon. Thank you for your children. Um, so we see our four graduates. There's something missing, as I just said. I know what it is now. It's the other half of this wonderful class. For we were a combined seventh and eighth grade class, and we thought it fitting that the seventh grade should be here today also, so that we could usher them on to the next step in their education. And so before I say anything else, I'd like to invite the seventh graders in too. Here they come. <laughs> now we're together. <laughs> so every morning since first grade, Waldorf classes around the world say the morning verse. They say it in German, in Spanish, in Hindu, in Chinese, in French, all kinds of languages and languages. And they begin their learning day every morning with this verse. So I invite us to stand, seventh and eighth graders, and say the morning verse together for the last time. Thank you. 
So, um, can't have a graduation speech without this pandemic mention, right? So, last March brought us throughout the world a need to make significant lifestyle changes due to the pandemic. However, while other schools went remote, we kept our doors open. The students learned outdoors under blazing sun, in sleet and high winds and snow. <laughs> Years from now, there'll be volcanoes and earthquakes that were happening at the same time. <laughs> they masked, they reported temperatures, they sanitized, they kept a distance from each other and other classes, and they pretty much did everything they should do to stay virus-free, as well as potentially socially alienated. So as extracurricular sports, dance, other activities shut down, at least they had their class. They had each other every day. They coped with not doing what friends do, like hugging, holding hands, singing, sharing food. They heard, but didn't see each other's mouths for most of every day. And they were all sporting tans above their noses and <laughs> pale and shriveled underneath. <laughs> and while it's better than going remote and staring at a screen, it, at times it felt like some sort of bizarre social experiment. What would happen if we deprived the most social of all age groups, their ability to be together, at least in a natural, normal way, free of COVID protocols? Well, reflecting on the year, I celebrate a class who treated each other with warmth and affection while observing these new socially stringent codes. They rose above the worries of the time and they had fun together. They had water fights, they played guitar, they tossed balls. Banter and laughter was the common everyday social atmosphere of the classroom. Whatever imminent threat lurked, the power of loving relationships transcended it. So this group of nine students is a supportive, warm, friendly class. They are helpful to each other, to their teachers, and to the younger students. They are enthusiastic learners and inquisitive about the world. They collaborate and know the value of friendship. They have the innate wisdom to know that their own individuality requires community, family, and friendship if it is to grow and thrive. Within this class, we have budding poets, artists, musicians, actors, singers, athletes, mathematicians, and scientists. I am in awe of their skills and accomplishments. They are funny. They are hardworking. They are creative. They are sensitive to the injustices of our time. They are indeed the future. So later in this ceremony, the class will recite Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken. And of course, many of us are familiar with this poem, but perhaps not with its context. Frost wrote this poem as a bit of a joke when his friend with whom he was walking couldn't decide which way to take when the path forked. One way wanted where, so Frost says. But he also says both that morning equally lay. So this poem communicates one moment of choice. And we might be quick to interpret Frost to be saying that with one choice begins an inexorable march to a final destination. But I would like to tell these young people, they will have choices to make every day, some clearly more important than others. Now more than ever, our lives are filled with choices. Choices are good. They represent freedom and variety. Some students have had the choice of which high school they will attend. Down the road, they will have to decide on a college, 
a job, where they live, with whom they live. For there will be choices, and some choices haven't been invented yet, so to speak. For there will be choices in the future that belong solely to this generation. So dear class, I think it's important that you realize the road taken or not taken, whether grassy or paved, cannot indelibly mark your destiny. There is no absolute right or wrong path. For belief in yourself is allowing yourself to make choices to see through the consequences of those choices. Some paths meander. Some are straight and narrow. Sometimes we aim for a destination and find something else more attractive along the way. You can take a turn and get lost, but what's important is you can self-correct, consult a guide, read a map, Google directions. Each path offers something, and it's up to you to discover whether you want to stay on that particular path or move in another direction. Life is not fixed. Life is fluid. And perhaps the best tools to pack on your journey down whichever road you go are confidence, honesty, and open-mindedness. We at Orchard Valley have tried to prepare you with a curious mind, a loving heart, and the capacity to imagine and participate in a world that celebrates its incredible diversity. But if you ever really do get lost, always look up. The stars will guide you to your next port. And because we are not offering a middle school, hopefully this is just a little hiatus we're taking, but there will be no middle school next year. So it seemed fitting to invite the seventh graders to express their appreciation with a short message, after which time we will hear our speeches from the graduates. So, Annalise, I invite you up. Hi, my name is Annalise. I came back to Orchard Valley after three years of plain old public school. I've learned so much in the past years, although some lessons were more important than others. Here I can be in seventh grade and still play, play like the first grader I was six years ago. I'm excited to go to U32, but I will miss the traditions at Orchard Valley, like picking apples in the fall and making cider, the spiral at holiday time and the boxcar races at Mayfest. Watercolor, chalk dust, and little gnomes won't be part of my life at U32. Most of all, I would like to thank my teachers and friends who have helped me get through the year. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ella. I came to Orchard Valley in fifth grade after moving from Missouri where I had homeschooled with a Waldorf curriculum for six years. When I first came to Orchard Valley, it was my first time going to an actual school since preschool. School was new and scary. However, the students and teachers here at Orchard Valley were so kind and welcoming that I quickly grew to love it. Even though I wasn't here for my whole entire childhood, this school feels like home. The main lesson I'll take away from Orchard Valley is the importance of friends and community. I've had an amazing time at Orchard Valley and I'm so grateful for the three years I got to spend here. Next year I'll be starting eighth grade at U32. I feel excited and prepared thanks to Orchard Valley. Hi, my name is Lucille. I've only been going to Orchard Valley since January of this year. Despite my short time here, I've made some of the best memories of my life. 
I found so much happiness here, which is significant because I was not in a great place before I came to this beautiful Waldorf school. I was struggling with my mental health and I was being self-destructive. On top of that, I was only going to school two days a week and, not, and a lot of activities I enjoyed were shut down due to COVID. I was missing my social group. When I came to Orchard Valley, I felt so welcomed by all the students and teachers. Although I was surprised by some of the rules, like not being allowed to use technology or eat snack during class, <laughs> uh, I found the environment to be magical. For the first time in a long time, I felt safe learning and growing around the with the people around me. Next year, I will be going to Cross at Brook Middle School for eighth grade. I will miss the nature and love that this school brings, but mostly I will miss the people. I will always remember Orchard Valley as the place that welcomed and accepted me in a very low point in my life. Hi, my name is Kimmy, and I have been attending Orchard Valley since kindergarten. As I come to a closing of my seventh grade year, I recall my childhood here at Orchard Valley. I will miss the long walks in the woods, which always seemed way too long back then. <laughs> and all the stories our teachers told us over the years. In fact, I'm going to miss my teachers the most. Miss Davis, or on the land teacher, Miss Kimaletti, our handwork or practical arts teacher, Mr. Maynard, who taught us about sustainability and Waldorf football, <laughs> and Miss Howard, my tutor, who helped me with my challenges in language arts. Last but most definitely not least, Miss Hill. Who came, at a, who came when our class was scattered. She picked us up and held us together when we needed it most. Orchard Valley has taught me many things, but what will stick with me forever is how it cultivated my imagination through stories, games, and art. With the confidence I have gained here, I will be continuing my education next year at U32. Hi, my name is Zephyr. I've been attending Orchard Valley Waldorf School since last October. I recently moved from Los Angeles to Vermont, which was a pretty big change for me. <laughs> I've learned new skills here, as well as some things about myself, like how good I am at acting, uh, how, mu <laughs> how much I like algebra, and how much I enjoy being outdoors in nature. I've made some close friends too, and uh, next year I'll be going to Pacham, but I most definitely will not forget Orchard Valley Waldorf School. Thank you so much for your comments, seventh grade. And now it is time to hear from our eighth grade graduates, and we'll start with Charlie Gunkel. But just wait one sec, Charlie. I have to see if there's anything I was supposed to say before that. Yes, there was. Let me say it. I can't not say this. I'm sorry, Charlie. That was a false start. Just that was the, the rehearsal. Um, no, we're just going to go ahead. Hello. <laughs> My name is Charlie Gunkel. Vermont has five seasons. Spring, summer, fall, winter, and of course, mud season. The cool days of spring are replaced by the heat waves of summer. Spring blossoms become vibrant trees on the leaves. Then the trees, covered in vibrant colors of fall, at last, turn the bare trees of winter. This yearly cycle is an example of living change. Just as with the seasons, change has affected my life throughout my time here at Orchard Valley. Talk about growth. I wore this fleece in first grade. 
if there's ever a simple picture of growth and change, this is it. <laughs> At Orchard Valley, in the early grades, playing is how we grow. My first through third grader was Mr. Brown. I remember our third grade class trip to Croco, where we got to play, a, where we got to play a lot of games. But what really sticks out in my mind, as hilarious to a third grader, was Caleb dropping his wood chip scoop into the composting toilet. <laughs> we also grew through work at Orchard Valley. I remember gardening in third grade. We harvested our crops and prepared a feast for our parents. We were so proud of our work. Fourth grade, short division. <laughs> that about sums it up. Um, for fifth and sixth grade, I had Mrs. Reinhardt. This was the year of the, of the pentathlon. Learning the discus and javelin was awesome. I thought I was the best based on the small size competitions at Orchard Valley. But I guess my hard lesson learned is out there with many other competitors, I wasn't as good as I thought I was. <laughs> For seventh and eighth grade, our teacher was Mrs. Hill. In seventh and eighth grade, we learned so much outdoors. From our hiking trip to the White Mountains, to studying chemistry and physics through sustainable living at Mr. Maynard's house. We made biochar to put carbon back into the earth and made a frame for a future outdoor classroom out of dead fallen trees. I discovered that learning algebra is something I enjoy and I'm good at. Recently, Miss Lucy of the Abenaki Nation came to teach us about her people's culture. I was really struck by how much their lives changed as a result of European settlement, and how much these people have lost. I learned so much from our play, A Midsummer's Night Dream, where I got to play a lead romantic role <laughs> and play it and create a lot of character, and create a lot of humor with my character. There are so many more examples of how I've changed, of how I've grown in my physical, academic, academic, and creative capabilities. Three teachers I would like to give particular mention to are Miss Hill, Miss Camaletti, and Miss Baker. Miss Hill. Miss Hill understood what I learned and what I needed. She has supported me in so many ways and made sure we got to learn outdoors and doing a lot of cool activities. Thank you. <laughs> Miss Camaletti. Oh. <laughs> Miss Camaletti, thank you so much for teaching me so many skills and guiding me through so many projects. You've known me since first grade. Thank you so much for being my handout teacher throughout my whole time here at Orchard Valley. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Baker, Ms. Baker, thank you so much for helping me with my reading and writing and just always being there for me. Words have always been hard for me. And right now, I cannot say enough in gratitude for the last five years you've tutored me. I wouldn't be here without you. Literally, I wouldn't be able to read the speech. <laughs> I used to be a little kid who wouldn't participate. I was shy and cautious. Now I'm wise and confident. <laughs> the last couple of years, I've opened up more, become more aware of the world around me and what's important to me. I feel like I can approach a situation, judge it, and make a decision about how I want to go into it. I know what I can do and what I'm capable of. Next year, I'll be going from a small independent school to Montpelier, a large public high school. I may start out shy and cautious, but I know I will grow, mature, and continue to develop myself. The bear trees will blossom again and again, for growth is a cycle. Thank you. students, parents, and hello students, parents, and friends of Orchard Valley Waldorf School. My name is Kian Na and I came to Orchard Valley in fifth grade. During the past four years, I have changed for the better. When I first came to the school, I was a very shy and disoriented tyke. I originally lived in the suburbs of DC, but when I moved to a farm in Vermont, it was a drastic change. Orchard Valley has been a huge influence on how well I have adjusted. For my first two years at Orchard Valley, my teacher was Miss Reinhardt. 
She was very nice to me and helped me adjust to my new school. She had two favorite things, coffee and cake. <laughs> Occasionally, when she was in a good mood, that is to say a baking mood, she would make a gourmet cake for the class. I remember when we did the Alice in Wonderland play and how supportive she was with all the actors. She was a great teacher and I will never forget her. At the end of the second year, we heard we would be getting a new teacher. I was sad, but also curious. My friend Ari and I came up with a plan. If we were really naughty, we would have less work to do seeing we had, as we had a new teacher who didn't know us. We were sorely mistaken when we met Miss Hill. <laughs> <laughs> now I make her seem super scary and well, she kinda was. So Ari and I ditched the plan. When Miss Hill came, however, I did start to slack off at my schoolwork. Miss Hill had none of it. She helped me get back on course, and even though she was strict about it, I can't thank her enough for saving my seventh grade year. Then COVID struck, and all schools were closed down in America. With a sh well, and the rest of the world. With a short <laughs> amount of time to prepare, Miss Hill made packets of schoolwork. She fired up the old PC, which Waldorf teachers rarely do, <laughs> <laughs> and school went online. I couldn't have asked for a better teacher during this time of crisis. In my eighth grade year, the class shrunk dramatically, and some of my good friends left. Although this made me sad, I looked on the bright side as I got to know my remaining friends a lot better. Aside from having to wear a mask all the time, it's been a pretty great year. Because of COVID, we had to be outside a lot, which is pretty awesome. Even though it was a more relaxed year, I learned so much. It has all worked out because of Miss Hill. I am so glad that I got to experience a Waldorf dream with all the kind and supportive people that have helped me along the way. I want to thank my family, especially my parents, for making sure I did my homework on time, and my carpool for driving me 40 minutes to school every day. At Orchard Valley, I got to experience acting, sustainable building at Mr. Maynard's homestead, pewter work with Ms. Camiletti, and games with Ms. Davis, to name a few highlights. I have changed for the better because of the ways in which I got to learn these different skills. I may not be your typical Waldorfian, slash Waldorf, but I've definitely benefited from these four unforgettable, unforgettable years. I will be attending St. Johnsbury Academy in the fall, located in, you guessed it, St. Johnsbury. <laughs> That's all, folks. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm glad you could make it today. My name is Wyatt Malloy, and I've been attending Orchard Valley since I've been in preschool. I came here 11 years ago. I started out in the farmhouse building behind you. Some of my oldest memories were from preschool with Miss Peggy, like digging in the sandbox or taking walks in the fairy woods. I loved preschool. We would have something different to eat according to the day of the week. Rice some days, soup we made, all contributing a vegetable from home, or my favorite, fresh rolls with butter. <laughs> when I was young, I really enjoyed the routine of it. One thing I didn't like was nap time, however. <laughs> I would pretend to sleep, and every once in a while open my eyes, and on rare occasions, I would make eye contact who with whoever was looking after us at the time, and then quickly shut them as if they hadn't noticed. <laughs> While writing this speech, I have reflected a lot about change. Change can sometimes be difficult, but the in the end, it helps us grow as people. A big change for me was transitioning onto first grade. At the time, one thing that really helped me was structure and routine. This was a considerable change on its own, but going to the grades building greatly added to the being overwhelmed. Along with seeing kids walking down the hall who towered over me. It's funny, I don't feel that tall, but in first grade, all the eighth graders were gigantic. <laughs> I was very lucky to have Mr. Brown. The first couple weeks were hard with, for me, um, but he helped me so much and was very welcoming. He gave us structure and routine, teaching us so much while giving us plenty of room to fool around, often taking us on walks in the woods to get our energy out. Most of the time, it's been, uh, it's, it was what's known today as Turkey Hollow. Another place we, um, he took us was somewhere called the Restaurant Tree. I don't know if any of you have heard of it. A lot of the younger kids go there. We would play pretend. I was always the bartender. 
I would serve up um, sticks and branches to the other kids where they all pretended they were sodas. <laughs> Eventually, however, Mr. Brown had to make changes for his family. He left in the end of third grade. So throughout the next five years, we've had many teachers, French teachers, um, music teachers, and even our main class teachers changed. In fifth grade, not only did we have a new teacher, but we had a new class due to the now seventh graders joining us. Throughout this change, both Miss Davis and Miss Camaletti have given us a sense of stability. Miss Davis has really taught me a lot about the importance of being outside and active. While Miss Camaletti has taught us about crafting and learning to build with our own creativity, and I always looked forward to both of their classes. Another huge change was COVID. It disrupted everyone's lives, but I feel so lucky to have been at school full time this year. Due to COVID and other reasons, a lot of our class left. While it was sad to see them go, I'm so glad to have a small class this year. I've gotten to know everyone so much better, and I found it a lot easier to learn. It has made it such a richer um, social and learning experience. Something else that has really helped me this year is Miss Hill. She started teaching our class last year. Before that, I heard heard great things about her. How she strongly supported the students and has a more relaxed way of teaching. These are both true. The te her teaching style really helped me. Um, Mr. Maynard was also very consistent this year. Every Tuesday, out of his own time, um, he would play football with us, as well as teach us boatmer, a form almost like Tai Chi. I think a few big changes that have got me, um, that have, I think a few big things that have got me through changes are routine and being active. Some of the activities that really helped me through COVID was mountain biking, snowboarding, and running. Over last summer, mountain, I, mountain biking was my favorite activity. But what has helped me even more are my friends. All my classmates, Zephyr, Camille, Lucille, Ella, Annalise, Caleb, Kian, and Charlie. I've gotten to know you all so well throughout this past year, especially. I would also like to thank Ethan, who is here today. He's been such a great friend. Um, and I would like also to give particular mention to Ida, who is also here today. It's been so nice knowing you. I've known you almost my whole life. I'm so glad we're friends. One of the biggest changes is soon to come, and that is high school. For those of you that don't know, next year I'll be attending U32. I'm very excited. I realized that I can face it much easier knowing all the lessons I have learned up to this point with previous change. However, to be honest, I'm pretty nervous especially with the size difference. I'll be moving from my class, from my grade where I am one of four people to a grade in which I have 130 fellow students. This will be a huge change. I am greatly looking forward to going there and I am very excited for all the opportunities like engineering, computer programming, and electronics, as well as sports programs. While Orchard Valley has a lot to ha offer, it doesn't have much of those. Through all of these hurdles and challenges, I have learned to grow and adapt, accepting the lessons that change can bring. Sometimes change can be scary, um, but at least, for uh, at least for this change, I know I'm ready. Now I'm I realize I'm one of the giants in the hallway, and I feel more prepared for ever than you for more prepared than ever for U32. There are many people I would like to thank for my experience here. First of all, Miss Davis and you, Miss Camaletti, for sticking with our class and teaching me so much, and Mr. Maynard for taking out time out of his day to play football with us. And in the beginning of the year teach us about sustainability. Then, of course, Miss Hill for teaching, so much, teaching me so much in these past few years, as well as Miss Peggy 
you were so welcoming to me in when I first arrived. And of course, Mr. Brown, you've had such a big impact on me today, even. Um, finally, I would th like to thank my parents. You've been so supportive all of my life. Um, thank you. Hello. Can, is, is this good? Wait, let me just. Hello, my name is Caleb. I've been at the school since kindergarten, but before that I was enrolled in Child's Garden, a Waldorf preschool. I never experienced the public school system firsthand. However, I can confidently say this. I am the person that I am because of Waldorf education. I'll go so far as to say that certain traits I possess, traits like a joy of learning and willingness to grow, can be solely attributed to the school and how everyone in it raised me. When I was enrolled in OVWS, my life changed forever. In public schools, I would have never learned lessons like always give your best effort and also had a knit. But here I am <laughs> saying what I've been taught and how I've matured, and I have yet to offer up a speck of gratitude. I would like to address the person who made this all happen. Thank you so much, Mom. You teach me something new every day, and even though your lessons sometimes show up in ways that I don't appreciate in the moment, <laughs> I realize that you know more than I can ever comprehend. I would also like to thank the teachers and the faculty. I greatly appreciate how everyone manages to make me feel comfortable. And I know that I can come to any one of you if I have any problems or would just like to chat. It's this feeling of welcomeness that really sticks with me. Thanks, everyone. Another person I would like to acknowledge is Mr. Brown, past educator of ours. In first grade, he held a space for our youthful antics while also teaching us about responsibility and respect. He created a balanced class dynamic, and he effectively prepared us for the coming years. Some of my fondest memories occurred in Mr. Brown's classes, and my experiences during my time with him will perpetually bring a smile to my face. <laughs> now, who would I be to not mention Miss Hill, our current teacher and honorary mom? Actually, former teacher and honorary mom. Oh, God. <laughs> These past two years, Ms. Hill has employed similar tactics to Rob Brown. I'm assuming we're on a first name basis now. <laughs> Providing room for our mischievous actions while still maintaining authority and keeping us reason reasonably in line. She has taken our class and nurtured us. Her relaxed demeanor provides room for us to grow and thrive. And when she offers us constructive criticism, it doesn't come across as judgmental. At least for me, that's how I learn best. Ms. Hill, I'm infinitely grateful to you. Last but most definitely not least, I would like to thank my tutor, Cindy Gardner Morse. You did such a good job. You did such a good job teaching me that my problem now isn't reading too slow; it's reading too fast. <laughs> Jokes aside, when I was diagnosed with dyslexia at the end of second grade, it was very apparent that I needed some help and support, and Cindy provided that and more, making sacrifices to be able to meet me and altogether holding me in my learning. I know you taught me with love, and I am so so greatly in debt to you. As a means of reminiscing and also providing closure, I would like to share a couple of my favorite memories I recall from over these past years. One moment I've consistently looked forward to is getting my main lesson book bound. For those not acquainted to the Waldorf ways, a main lesson book is something that we work on all year. It's a collection of drawings and writings representing what we've learned. I pride myself on the work in my main lesson books, and it's fun to see them in their finished state after spending so much time laboring over their contents. Another tradition I cherish deeply is the eighth grade buddy system. Unfortunately, this year I wasn't able to spend much time with my buddy, one of the many consequences of COVID, but I remember the time I enjoyed with Nelson when I was in first grade. I particularly loved it when he gave me a piggyback ride and then proceeded to run around in the field. For that first year, I molded my personality to fit his, picking up on everything he did. He was a role model and mentor to me, but he was also just really fun. I'm grateful for the sacrifices everyone's made for me to go to OVWS, and I will definitely miss this school, particularly everyone in it. But it is pretty magical the amount of nature here. Who can say they went to a school that had 55 acres of land? I'm pretty lucky. I will look back on my time here with content and happiness, quite possibly longing. However, I am excited to move on. 
Next year, I will be attending MHS, Montpelier High School, and I can't wait to meet new people and familiarize myself with the new system. I'm already starting to feel school pride and being a jerk to my friends who will be going to U32 next year. <laughs> Montpelier's rival. <laughs> I've become my own person here, safe from stereotypes and the perception of what I should become. I've learned lessons that will be applicable through the rest of my life. I've evolved, reached heights that seemed impossible to reach. Growth is an inevitable byproduct of learning, but it is not a given. I'm glad I had the opportunity to come here and grow. Thank you. Thank you so much, eighth grade, soon to be ninth graders. Gives one a, a taste of uh, your experiences here in so many ways. Um, we have prepared a poem and a song for you today, and we'll begin with Robert Frost, The Road Not Taken. <laughs> Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood, and looked on one, as far as I could. To where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other, as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim. Because it was grassy and one could wear, though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, indeed no step had trodden black. Oh, I took the first for another day. by Green Day.
right, now it comes down to that time that we hand out the diplomas. Hot off the press, signed merely minutes ago. <laughs> so, um, these four young people presented their eighth grade projects about three weeks ago. The degree of initiative and dedication that each gave to his project was extraordinary for any age, but particularly for this age. I was struck by each boy's refusal to be daunted. Each project, in some sense, went wrong, allowing the boys an opportunity to dig in and succeed. Wyatt's drone was so successful because he stuck with it day after day, troubleshooting why it wouldn't fly, refusing to give up. Caleb tossed out his original project, which he spent a fair bit of time on, and went with his passion for learning to draw. He devoted hours, literally 40 hours to this incredible masterpiece, which you will see in the art retrospective. Kian made a guitar tireless, uh, and he worked tirelessly with the wiring, which was his biggest challenge, to ensure that it was an instrument fit to play. And Charlie took on his beats program, completely alien to him at first. And he began to understand how to use it and realize its complexity. Each has the grit to realize his dreams. Charlie, heading off to Montpelier High, will be missed for his gentleness and humor, his thoughtful and helpful demeanor, along with his playfulness, which makes him a popular mentor to the younger students and a good friend to his peers. We can imagine basketball, ultimate frisbee, mountain biking, and chess to be among Charlie's pastimes at high school. You can come on up and get your diploma. There's only four, but I'm going <laughs> to make sure it takes me a long time. <laughs> oh my. Okay, it's this one. Kean, Kean, soon to be a freshman at St. Johnsbury Academy, will take with him his love for the outdoors, working with his hands, building carving any project so long as it's creative and physical. He is also an exceptional guitar player. Wyatt anticipates his year at U32 with excitement. He will no doubt continue his interest in science and engineering, along with his passion and success in track and field and mountain biking. Wyatt has grown up here at Orchard Valley to be a kind and responsible boy who values a good conversation and a well-informed debate. He is a caring and helpful individual the kind one can count on. And Caleb. Caleb will bring many talents to Montpelier High School. Fiddle, guitar, drawing, track and field and an intellect sharpened with curiosity and a love for learning that manifests in all his studies. Caleb is chatty and fun-loving with his peers. He is kind, patient, and helpful to younger students. We have
have received you in reverence. We have educated you in love. And now we let you go forth in freedom. Thank you. So we'll close with our traditional faculty song. concludes our graduation. Thank you all for being here. Please make sure to go into the apple tree room and look at the art respe respective perspective. Wrong word. <laughs> Retrospective. Thank you. Set up there. And also the 7th and 8th grade made a mural that is posted on the straw bale yurt. Make sure to stop and look at that on your way out as well. And we'll have some goodies and drinks and stuff out in a moment. So please go hug your students.